very brief question. That is a case you can get a client in the emergency room, 45 year old buzzwords, present to the emergency room to complain of what? Progressive shortness of breath, dry cough, autopnea, waking up at night from sleep due to what? Shortness of breath, leg edema, periobutal edema, and his pant size does not fit anymore. A bunch of buzzwords. That should give you a clue, enough. One sentence should give you enough clue to the answer. He had gained, what, three pounds in two days. Another buzzword. He has history of a coronary disease two years ago and has been non-compliant. This is key with medication and management. So, what is the problem? In exams, is AO times four. It's long, he has crackles on long beds, but whereas in the cardio, you see S3, S1, S2, and S3. It's not supposed to be there. GI, you can palpate his spleen and the liver. Another buzzword. And his abdomen is distended. His flank, when you look at the flank of the abdomen, it's full with something. And there's a fluid wave test, buzzwords, and he has edema. There's no ulcer and that rule out any peripheral artery disease. And his PND is greater than 100. What do you think? We have a patient who is 45, progressive shortness of breath, bad sweat, dry cough, another number two, autopnea, number three, waking up at night from sleep due to shortness of breath. This is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. He has edema. He has periobital edema. His pant size does not fit anymore. He has gained three pounds in two days. Too much. Three pounds in two days or five pounds in a week is the diagnosis of heart failure or fluid overload. He has coronary disease and he has to be non-compliant. Even though this does not help you make the diagnosis, it tells you Somebody with the heart disease, now he has progressed to what? Heart failure. Crackles, he has a long problem. New S3, his spleen and liver is palpable. Usually, I cannot feel your spleen or your liver. If I can feel them, they're too big. So this is splenal hepatomegaly. His abdomen is distended, and this flank is full. This is ascites. And that is positive wave, wave test, flu wave test. And he has edema. His BMP is greater than 100. So he has all the features of both left and right heart failure. This is a, we call it chronic heart failure. From what? His coronary disease that he has not been taking his medication. Now he has progressed. The heart is weak. He can do anything. And he has heart failure. When you read these questions, if you are not able to make a diagnosis, um, you have to really, really pay attention when you study about buzzwords and say, oh, this is what this the problem is. This is not a long problem. It's a cardio, um, cardio problem due to coronary disease leading to heart failure. So we have a heart failure, right? So what do you do? Now let's go to the pharmacology. Which of the following are indicated? What medication will you give this patient? Dumetinite, spinolactone, aducortazide, digoxin, lensinopril, cavidolol, isosorbite. All this medication is, are indicated. These are medication for heart failure. You should know all of them and their functions and their side effects. You have to know all these medications. These are medications we use for heart failure. They all do different things to help with the patient. So this is indicated, this is indicated, 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 indicated. It's a selector that apply. So if you don't know, if you know only five out of seven, just pick it. Three out of four, pick it. If it's one, pick it. By the seven answer choice, I want you to get seven or so that you can get more points. Okay. 
But just choose those you're confident. If you don't know that isosulfide, which is a nitrate, then uh, you should pick those that you think you're confident, that you quite recognize. Okay? So all of them are indicated. Number two, match the side effect and function with appropriate medication. So you're going to now match them based on their uh, medication. What is their function and the side effect, right? So do me tonight, number one, I'll put number one there. And I will change the color, I will use blue. So bumitinide is number one. Look at it and see which one is this problem. Is a what? Is a diuretic, which is a loop diuretic. Loop diuretic, their number one side effect is what? So we're going to look at the answer choice. It's no, it doesn't call hyperuricemia. It's not ionotrope. It does not cause hyperkalemia. It does not cause what? And flushing, okay. It does not cause hyperkalemia or hyponatremia, but it improve oxygenation because you're going to get rid of what? The fluid, when you get rid of the fluid, it will increase your oxygenation and it will improve, it will cause this what? Hypokalemia. So improvement of oxygenation because it's a diuretic, you get rid of all the fluid, and it causes hypokalemia. So this one is bumitimide. Spinolactone is another diuretic, but you got to look at the pairing. It's a potassium sparing, so it should cause hyperkalemia. I see hyperkalemia here, but it doesn't cause remodeling. I see hyperkalemia here, and it causes hyponatremia because you get rid of your sodium and it increases your potassium. So this is number two. This is number two. That's a um, spinolactone. So this is spinolactone. Number three. This hydrochlorothiazide, they causes hypokalemia and it causes hyperuricemia. So this is number three. Number four, the joxin, what it does is it decreases your cardiac um, yeah, preload, afterload, but the main function that they do is they are ionotrope. They help the heart to pump. So number four, ionotrope, and the major side effect is heart block. Okay, and number five, lansinopril. You should know that we all know angioedema or the word AIDS, right? Angioedema cough causes hyperkalemia and is teratogenic. But I never give you those things. I want you to think. I see hyperkalemia here. I've selected so. I see hyperkalemia, but this is already picked up. So it causes hyperkalemia, and this is another function in heart failure. It decreases ventricular remodeling. The heart that is all dilated and is weak, it prevents further damage. So they're very, very important. So this is number five. They involve in remodeling of the heart. Number six, cave the law. What do you think? This is a beta blocker. Yes, you use beta blocker in heart failure. Are you worried? People say, oh, you want to decrease their heart rate. No. You use beta blocker to decrease their cardiac workload. And it's a blocker. It causes bronchospasm. So this is number six. And number seven, you left with that. This is a, a nitrate. All nitrate decreases your preload, your afterload. And because of your preload, it causes flushing, orthostatic hypotension. And so this one, flushing and decreased preload. So that is seven. And this is the way they can ask questions based on function side effect. And this is a summary of it. I hope you gain something and then use this as a guide, as a study so that you know, you know, you master some of the side effect and the medication, what you should pay attention to. But that's a typical uh, end class uh, next generation type of question um, by using pharmacology as a knowledge. Take care of yourself and all the best of luck. Bye-bye.